Hi everyone, and welcome to the Buffett and Beyond Research Saturday Market Recap Letter, February 3rd, 2024. Remember folks, if you want to live on the beach like Jimmy Buffett once did, you've got to learn how to invest even better than Warren Buffett does now. And this week, oh my gosh, after a brief pullback earlier in the week, Amazon and Meta took the reins of this market, and this was on Thursday after they announced their earnings. After the bell, Meta up 20% in one day and Friday and our growth portfolio is now up seven and a half percent in one month and the top stocks in our ETF QQQ portfolio which exists of 12 stocks are up 9.5 percent and we're only one month into the year here folks and our weekly stock analysis video well Apple seems to be slowing down a little bit but can it keep up with the rest of the stocks in our growth portfolio which is up about 60 well, actually 59 percent over 13 months well, folks, we have some new numbers or new expectations going into 2025 on this stock, and we're going to take a close look at it. So this is going to be very interesting. Now, the top stocks in our e our QQQ portfolio are tripling the S&P as of Friday. And over 13 months, get this, folks, over 13 months, these top stocks are up 124%. So in other words, we took last year's returns and added January's returns. And this is what we have. The top stocks are up 124%. Yes, more risk, no doubt about it. But look at those returns. And these are the top stocks in the, in the NASDAQ. That's the QQQ portfolio. The top 100 stocks in that NASDAQ minus any financial stocks. So boy, oh boy, these portfolios or these top stocks are doing fantastic. What a great strategy. And when we look at the S&P 500, well, we know that last week we went up and we topped the top line here. And that means, as we said last week, that usually when we top the go above it or below it, that's a strong market in either direction. And then we pulled back a little bit, didn't even touch that 20-day moving average. So we had about two days of decline in here. And then bam, all of a sudden, Thursday and Friday, we just took off like a rocket. And here we are right again at the top of that top band again. And when we look down here, we thought for sure this blue line was going to cross down below the red line, which would give us a sell signal and it was riding right on it and then with Thursday and Friday's movements this line is now in the bullish camp so folks we have a pretty good market here and we still have more earnings to go this coming week which we'll take a look at in our Monday market letter so now here's the S&P 500, and this is the 20-day exponential moving average. Now, what's the difference between a moving average and an exponential moving average is the exponential moving average takes more weight in the latest reading. So it counts more on yesterday's market, which counts more than the day before's closing market and more than the day before that closing market where let's say a 20-day moving average takes the past 20 days of closes and averages them all together. So exponential moving average is a faster moving average. So the S&P came almost down to it and boy oh boy it came down on Thursday and was testing it a little bit and then Friday we didn't know what was going to happen but early in the day, it came down and tested the high of the day before right in here and then took off like a rocket. So boy, oh boy, it's doing very, very well. And of course, down here, intermediate term indicator turned back up again. Boy, we've never seen so many turns on this 20 on, on the moving average convergence indicator, which is what we use for our intermediate term indicator. So looking pretty good right in here, folks. And the QQQs, those are the ones that are performing the best because they have Meta in them. They have Amazon in them. They have Google in this portfolio. And yeah, it came down to test its 20-day moving average, bounced right back up off it. And boy, oh boy, down here, it actually gave a sell signal. And now it's turning up even 
but it looks like it wants to give us a buy signal if we get a good Monday and Tuesday in here. This will give us another buy signal. But we have to be very, very careful in here because the market averages are not in following the top seven stocks in here. So we have a few stocks that are taking all the glory, but the rest of the market is lagging. So there's a lot of portfolios out there that are not doing very, very well at all. We happen to be in the top stocks and the numbers tell us to get into those. It's not that we watch television, listen to the radio and say, oh, we're going to get Meta, we're going to get Amazon, we're going to get Google. Those stocks have the numbers to support buying into them. So that's why we have them and that's why our portfolios are doing so well. So when we look at the S&P 500, one more time in the shorter time frame, we see the same thing, bouncing off that 20-day exponential moving average. The indicator down here just start, turned back up again. So we do have buy signals on everything, and we're very scared at these heights. Yes, we are, <laughs> and earnings season will now be coming to an end. Even though we have a lot of earnings coming out this week, we're nearing the end of that cycle, and usually there's a little lull after earnings season. So we'll see what happens, folks, but right now we're sitting pretty. And yeah, all our indicators are up, and we still have some hedging uh, on the top stocks in the ETFs, but the top stocks are doing so well that even with hedging, and of course, we only had 50% on, and we sent an, uh, an email out to our money managers and our money management timing letter to take those hedges off, but most of the money managers went home early on Friday and so didn't get that message <laughs> or, they, or they weren't in the office to do anything with it. So some of us did take the hedge timing off and others didn't. But it doesn't matter really because the hedges are not hurting the portfolio just a little bit because the stocks in there like Meta and Amazon just shot up and boy, oh boy, they're overpowering any hedges that we have. So even if you had hedge timing on at all, and some of you had a third, uh, you left it at a third because we had a third for a while, we went went up to 50%. Most of you didn't do that. Some of you did. No matter how you did it, whether you had hedging or you didn't have hedging, you're up for the year, folks. You're up nicely. You're up above the S&P 500 because only this hedging is for those ETF portfolios, the top stocks in those ETF portfolios. So hedges or no hedges. In fact, those of you who are hedged all the time are also outperforming the S&P 500. So people that say, hey, I just want to be hedged. I'm happy with my six. If I can get six, seven, eight percent and be hedged, I'll take that. And they are, folks. They're outperforming just about every one of those ETFs are outperforming the S&P 500, at least the ETFs that we're in, which are the tech, the semiconductors, the QQQs, and then the portfolio that we made up, including all the top stocks in those three portfolios. Very, very nice. And for those of you who always want some type of portfolio protection, about 12% below the market, here we are. <laughs> We're hedged. These hedges are very, very inexpensive. These are put options, very inexpensive now. And of course, we'll be rolling over the February 16th, probably in two weeks. We'll see what happens. So anyway, you're protected. If the market falls more than 11 or 12%, you're totally protected. And that's a nice feeling. And some of you say, well, this costs a little bit. Yeah, but your portfolios are up. If you're in that QQQ portfolio that we mentioned in 13 months, you're up 124%, folks. That's a lot of money. We will not see another year like last year and the beginning of this year for a while to come. But it's an election year and interest rates are going to come down sometime this year. And boy, that's all the market wants to hear. So folks, we had a little tough week in the beginning of the week, and then all of a sudden the market took off. So go out and boy, enjoy the beach art contest on the beach. And this is last year's winner. 
So it's not this year's because it didn't take place yet. It takes place later today. And right now in South Florida, we have a sunny day. We have a warm day. It's just beautiful. And we'll see what those artists on the beach come up with. This is absolutely magnificent. I love this picture. Again, it's last year. And yeah, it, it's just gorgeous. Go out. Enjoy stuff like this, folks. Be with your family. Have a great Sunday dinner. Stay safe. And we'll see you back here next week.